keep his troops in shape, substituting rather freely. And the same can be said for Bill Shalander, the Westmore coach. He's being assisted by Brian Crookham out of Moore. And Don, even though we don't see many fans on the far side of the field, that's the sun deck as we came into the stadium, but a rather comfortably filled stadium here on the, the press box side. So good support for the All-State soccer matchups. You couldn't uh, wedge another person in on this west side with a shoehorn. So a nice crowd here at South Intermediate High School in Broken Arrow for the All-State games, starting with soccer. The West, they've controlled it on this end for quite a while, but still no shots on goal. Until that one there, and Chuck Brad with another set. He's right there. And the stopper for the left side, trying to get it back up to midfield. Simmons. Well, let's watch the shot. Bobby, Bobby, touch, Left footer, but right in the bread basket as far as Chuck Bread is concerned. And an official, and officially his third save of this first half. District championships in boys action this past spring. So we'll get the corner kick here. Jinx, Ponca City, Union and Broken Arrow. Mike. In 4A, Fort Gibson, Bixby, Edison, and Claremore were the district champions. Jeremy Alexander out of Claremore, finishing the year as the state's leading scorer with 22 goals. Blomgren from Ponca City led 5A scoring with 18 goals. Again, both coaches going to their bench rather freely here, and that's just a necessity. You can see some of the kids on the sideline with their water bottles squirting it up on their head and down their back, and it is hot out there. They'll lose a lot of fluid the first half, so they'll have to try to replenish that at halftime. And can you remember, Don, when you couldn't replenish the fluid? Yes. Remember they used to make you take those salt tablets? <laughs> yeah, not let you drink and give you oh, salt. Oh, man. <laughs> Who thought that idea? I don't know, but uh, we went through it. I know it. I coached it. <laughs> so it's your fault. Why? Why? I know. Because it's your fault I woke up in the middle of the night with cramps. <laughs> well, that's the way people coached at that time. That's the way I'd been coached. I thought it was right until finally I learned a little different. Goodness, no wonder. It's a, it's a wonder we hadn't uh, lost some kids during that yeah, really period. Is. Well, here's the West with an advantage. Scoreless first half. Defensively, the East doing a nice job with Michael Byer, the defender out of Sepulpa, with 15 minutes remaining in the first half and scoreless all-state soccer match between the East and the Blue and the red-clad West. It was a good defensive play by Michael Byer that time. The defender, he is out of Sepulpa. Don, he took on three of the West and came out with the ball. Boy, they are getting rough, aren't they? The West, yes, number six, Yaffe, with the foul, and so it'll be a kick for Randy Sheberg out of Broken Arrow. Well, at least he'll lay it down, and Michael Byer out of Sepulpa, one of the defenders. The header, centered, nobody there. Keeping it alive for the East. Jason Corbin out of Ponca City. Pat Gregory out of Shawnee, number eight for the East. Nice header. Oh, and a, a nice job of saving it for the East team. Derek Pittman for Mawasso. I thought might be in it goalie. No. 
Chuck Brad still back there. We may see Derek Pittman come in another position. Who knows? Here comes the West with James Anderson out of Westmore. We're getting it from him, Michael Byer, out to midfield. Go cut! Go cut! Cross. There you go. Right, right, right. Pressure. Pressure. Here comes Jaffe again, number six. He has been busy as well as Anderson from the midfield positions for the West. The West still controls. 13 minutes unofficially remaining in the first half. Kicked out by Will Edwards, number five. The Union defender come out of the game, being replaced by number nine, Michael Liu. Substitutions in for the West again. Number three, Curtis Banks, the forward out of Lawton Eisenhower, and number 15, Will Davis, the defender from Moore. Will Edwards and Michael Byer both yeah, an excellent job in there defensively for the East. It is getting physical. What do we got here? Foul called on the East. So here's the kick from Will Davis from Moore. And we'll go back the other way. I can't think of a more difficult job in officiating mm. than it would be to officiate a, a real hot contested type soccer match as we're watching tonight because the guy has to be up and down the field every angle. James Anderson, who had quite a season for Westmore, one of the one of the state's top scorers out of his midfield position from Westmore, been rather busy in this game. Number five for the West, as has number six midfielder also from Westmore, Elliot Yaffe. The West trying to get something going here with number 11, Heath Simmons out of Choctaw. Here comes Brett out again to capture. And to kick it back to midfield and beyond. Curtis Banks couldn't control it as he was fighting off Bobby Parrott, number 18 of Union. We've hit 10 minutes remaining in the first half. Bobby Parrott giving a great effort that time, Don, on the header, and he was trying to hit it back over into the center of the field, and if so, he'd have been able to come back around and maybe get a shot at it. Great effort in there by Bobby Parrott. Jay, we haven't talked yet about the Tulsa Pride or uh, some of the other great recreational club soccer teams that we have had the pleasure of telecasting in the past few years, but I know uh, we mentioned Alex Guterik's name earlier, and, there have been a lot of former Roughnecks that have stayed in the Tulsa area that have continued the progress for the soccer teams. Here's a breakaway by the West, and knocked away once, twice, and cleared out. That was the West's best shot at a goal in quite a while. It really was, and just credit once again in there, the great work in goal of Chuck Bread because he is staying with them. Uh, you were mentioning Alex Kateric, and you always have to think of Steve Earle and Keith Eddy, just a couple of them that have played professional soccer in England and have uh, just made their residence here in Tulsa and coaching the youth soccer groups. And what a contribution. Alex Kateric, Steve Earle, Keith Eddy, Victor Moreland now, Charlie Mitchell, and you can just go on and on. 
those who have made great contributions to the Met Tulsa metropolitan area soccer growth. I say that the Oklahoma Soccer Association has close to 40,000 members in the early 80s, down to about 30,000 now. Really has been a defensive struggle, even though they've had a couple of three shots on goal that looked like that uh, Either one of the teams could have broken into the scoring yep. column, but uh, just haven't been able to do it. I think you have to credit the great goalkeeping on both ends of the field. Ooh. The East thought they were going to get something set up. Nice job at clearing it back to the uh, keeper. Powerful leg for Chuck Bread. He has a strong leg. Give him a little tailwind, and it is strong, <laughs> isn't it? Indeed, though, East is working with the 20 mile per hour wind. Moving right to left. Mike, go ahead, Abe. Terry Celeste yelling out instructions for his East squad. Grant Hill missing the header, but the East still. Remains with it. Hill, nobody there. Intercepted by Jesse Knight, the forward from Edmund. Here comes the West again. Oh, he missed the kick, but he had a teammate right behind him. It's a good example of why you never take anything for granted. You have to follow up in any sport, and that was a great example of it there. Chris Reynolds. Pitching it over to Michael Liu. To Pat Gregory out of Shawnee. Again, these All-Staters not having much practice time together. Oh, a nice setup. The pass in front of the net. John! That's another close attempt uh, by the East to get a to get a goal, and you can see Frank Johnson bringing the ball back across. No, it wasn't Frank. Who'd you call? Couldn't tell which one it was, Don. But uh, nice, nice play, nice follow through. Sixth shot on goal for the East. Still scoreless. Each team with six shots on goal. Four saves unofficially for Chuck Brad out of Tahlequah, and one save for. The keepers out of Westmore, Brian Anson, Jeff Whitaker. Number seven, Reggie Kirkland, defender out of Muskogee, comes in, I believe, for the first time. Number 15 for the West, Will Davis, one of the top defenders for Moore. Clearing it for the West squad. The Curtis Banks from Lawton Eisenhower. This one will belong to the East. And a nice little nudge in there by Broken Air's Randy Sheberg <laughs> as he took the West player out of contention. Whitaker tending the nets for the West. He hasn't had much to do back there lately. Dale Watts, the Booker T. Washington coach, and his East girls defeating the West in a thriller three to two. Here we're scoreless with about five minutes remaining in this first half. Stop, Stop. Oh, no. They ready for it. Get back that old man. That's it. That's a good run, Reggie. Let it go. This one can't be controlled by the West number 14, Mike Williamson out of Yukon, and so 15 for the East. Butch Skullall forward from Broken Arrow, throws it in. And a foul here on the West, number 10, Greg Lee out of Dell City, and can't blame him there. I assure you one thing, he really took Scott Hill out of there, and you can see Scott going down at a pretty fast rate of speed, and suddenly in from the right-hand side of the picture, comes Greg Lee and he up ends him. We don't need three on this, Randy. We only need one or two. Yeah, I'm going. 
on the far side of the field. You can see the East players lining up, and we'll see a play develop here off the kick. Now look at him. Sheberg with the effort. And Michael Byer was kind of running interference and hoping to maybe catch the wall napping or maybe <laughs> catch them moving. He fakes yep. the first kick and we Sheberg saw, comes in and we've seen that happen before. We certainly have. Saw that in the earlier game. Hey, you got to put those away. This is the first time that the All-State games have been performed here in Broken Arrow for soccer. Having been performed previously in Union in 88 and 89, Edmond in 1990, Catusa 91 and 92. But again, Frank McNabb Field pretty much torn up due to the recent tornado in April. And so they moved it to this field here in Broken Arrow, which has hosted many a championship games, only to find it in disarray because of a recent storm but they've done a nice job repairing the field, even though they weren't able in time to erect a new scoreboard. Haven't needed one for this one though so far, no score. And according to our watch, 12 minutes remaining first half. I beg your pardon, two minutes left in this first half. I say 12. Two minutes left. Well, had he gotten past that one defender, it was just him and the keeper, Chuck Brett. He's had a nice first half. And this one will go out of bounds, and so it'll be a goal kick for the East squad. Chuck Brett's been a very active goalkeeper for the East here in the first half out of Tahlequah. And Lee Turner, the referee, says that is the end of the first half. With the East and the West scoreless, we're coming back to give you the halftime statistics and start the second half when we return to Broken Arrow. Jones Sport announces the grand opening of our new location at 97th and Memorial. And to celebrate, Fred Jones has lowered prices on over 500 new and used cars and trucks. New Explorers start at $14,998. Loaded Crown Victorias are only $16,990. And 93 Rangers and Escorts are both priced at just $79.73. Register for a trip to Disney World, courtesy Carlson Travel Network's Fierce Travel and Delta Airlines. The next minute first half, Don King J.B. Haney with you. High school sports all-state games continue from the Tulsa area. After the soccer, later on in the week, we'll have uh, baseball, tennis, golf, wrestling, basketball, then culminated with the all-state football game. We will have the basketball game for you, the large school basketball game for you, and we'll talk about that as we go along in this contest. And let's take a look at our statistics. <clears throat> you look there, Don, four to seven on shots on goal. The West has had seven much like in the girls game they're getting more shots on goal but not able to capitalize on them but both defenses playing rather remarkable soccer here in the first half only 11 shots taken two saves to one in favor of the east and uh, corner kicks the west had only one but uh, again defense dominating the first 40 minutes of play been impressed with the play of uh, goalkeeper chuck brett out of tahlequah he certainly well deserved of his first half shutout And we take a look at some of the action here. The first half, we're coming back with the second half as we continue with the All-State Boys Soccer Match from Broken Arrow. Raleigh South Park Lincoln Mercury is now open at 90. We start the second half. And we've got a new keeper in, just shy of his 19th birthday in a couple of days, Derek Pittman out of Owasso. We have seen him not only on the soccer fields, we've seen him on the football fields. Good effort. So we'll get a look at him. Again, he's out of Owasso. And still in goal for the West, Westmore's Jeff Whitaker. I 
as Pittman there. Wind still blowing rather briskly down out of the south, so we'll see if it makes a difference with the West squad who will have the wind to their back the second half. Starting for the East defensively, number nine, Michael Liu out of Bartlesville. He is a National Merit Scholar, one of the top 2,000 students in the country. I'm amazed at the academic achievements of most of these soccer players we've seen in both games, the girls and the boys. And talking to some of the players, they mentioned, JV, that soccer actually helps them as far as uh, they feel they're better students when they are playing soccer than when they're not. You know, a lot of athletes feel that way. They feel like that they're more focused when all of their free time is taken away where they know they have X number of uh, hours allocated for academic work, X number for practice, and it kind of kind of keeps them going straight. A lot of people argue that, but uh, you can look at down this roster. And I was just looking here at Curtis Banks out of Lawton Eisenhower. He's going to McPherson College on both soccer and academic scholarship. Handball. They didn't play soccer when you were in Big Cat, did they? Uh, they didn't know what soccer was in Big Cat, Oklahoma, no. And I'll tell you, until the Roughnecks came to Tulsa, not many people knew much about it around here. Well, you think about it, the Roughies got started in 1977, and they didn't have high school soccer here until 1985. That's right, and it took a long battle, of, a hard battle, in order to get soccer into the high schools because people just felt like that it would destroy the other sports. And, I know for one, I was athletic director at Webster High School during that period of time, and, and I, I fought for soccer. I thought it was just a great opportunity for kids that weren't playing some of the other sports. And there's a lot of kids who play soccer that are just not big enough to play football. They're not tall enough to play basketball to a degree. But yet they've got the quickness and the speed, the hand and eye coordination. They don't need the hand, but they've got the eye foot coordination and make great soccer players. So I think it's been a good addition to athletics. I know you were mentioning to some of the soccer coaches before our broadcast about uh, their association because you were past president of the Oklahoma Coaches Association and you would like to see the soccer coaches and uh, some of the other coaching associations join the whole umbrella of the Oklahoma Coaches Association. I think it would just add, Don, to the All-State Coaches Convention and Carnival Week if they had them all. Shot by 15, just wide. That's Butch Skullall for Broken Arrow. Boy, would the BA fans here enjoy that if one of their Broken Arrow players could score. The other player besides Skullall that is performing, Randy Shaber, got a Broken Arrow. And of course, Broken Arrow has been well represented in the past years in the All State soccer game. What happens a lot of time with the splinter groups is they grow and become more dominant until they can get to the point where they can host their own all-state games such as soccer and girls basketball. They're afraid that if they get into the big organization, they'll just become, you know, a little drop in a big pond, where as long as they keep it out, well, they pretty much control it themselves. But I think it would be a lot better if they could have it pretty much under the same umbrella. It would be great for the media to have all of them coming in at one time. And, and, you know, tonight, why the two Metropolitan newspapers, I have not seen a representative from them here. They may be down in the stands thinking it's too hot up here, but uh, they haven't gotten the coverage, I think, that the kids deserve when they make All-State. Oh, the nice grab by Pittman. I mentioned Broken Arrow well represented in the past All-State games. One of the gentlemen I've had the pleasure of watching when we've done soccer in the past few years has been Randy Richardson. Boy, he was a great tender of the nets for Broken Arrow played in this affair a few years ago. Not a bad kick there by Pittman, headed the University of Tulsa on a soccer scholarship against the win. He chunked that thing about 55 yards. Make a run, make a run. So the throw in by Greg Luton from UConn, number nine. The West has pretty much controlled the ball on this end. And have really had only one shot on goal in this half. Here again, we'll see the wall forming and we'll see the three West players out here and a little play develop, maybe a fake. The goalie, Derek Pittman, he's moving, trying to guess as well. Well, the East really has had the only legitimate shot or the only legitimate chance in this game. And that shot. Too high from the foot of James Anderson out of Westmore. Looks like it had been three if it had been in football. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think he did get it through the goalpost. <laughs> right through the uprights. Uh, Anderson, I believe, is the kicker for Westmore, by the way. But to the story, the only really legitimate chance in that first half was Reynolds, Chris Reynolds, out of Booker T. Washington, had a wide open net. He was right in front of the net, lost his balance, and missed the shot to the wide open net. He was about 10 yards out. Couldn't stick it in. Shots on goal on officially. The West was seven, and the East with a half dozen. Nice clear out here by the West. But the East has it in their end of the field for the first time in a while as we're six minutes into the second half. No score with the East-West 5A Boys All-State Soccer Match. Number five for the West, James Anderson out of Westmore. You just saw he and Shaberg, 11 from Broken Arrow, mixing it up. Anderson getting a little over-aggressive. And Scalal using the back of one of his teammates. Shepard. They played together at Broken Arrow, so certainly familiar with each other. Just two of you. Go, 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 White. How many blues going on? Hold up this minute, blues. Hold up there. Excuse me. Go. go the officials go. telling the blue to hold up. Massive subs for the East. Michael Byer, number three, in for Sepulpa. Number four, Jason Corbin from Ponca City, who will attend the University of Tulsa this fall. Checks in. The West trying to control it at midfield. Andy Miller out of Norman making that interception that's giving the, the West an opportunity here. He gets it back. Travis Hogg out of Yukon had a chance. Hogg goes back to get it. Greg Luton from Yukon fighting with one of the East players. Looked like it was Myers out of Barlesville, number 16. And here's the kick here for the East. Nice job, pass, and our first goal of the game. Nice header goal from number 17 for the East, Brad Cleveland. Out of Jinx, who played on the 91 state championship team for the Trojans, as well as district championship teams the last two years. Certainly a perfectly executed play as Brad Cleveland breaks in from the far side, Don, and that was just uh, exceptionally well timed. Nice header. And Will, get them organized now. Get them organized. Get them organized. That's a very difficult play in soccer. In order to get the timing off the kick and the header, and you start thinking about it. For those who don't think it takes a lot of athletic ability, they need to go try it. You bet. So the East jumps out one to nothing, much like they did at the girls' contest previously. And much like they did in the 4A boys' contest last night. The East winning that one, three to two in 4A boys, and the girls winning previously this evening, three to two. Here's Whitaker out to take charge. That was the first shot on go, I believe, by the East in the second half, and it certainly paid off. A header by Brad Cleveland out of Jinx gives the East a 1-0 lead. Free kick here coming up for the West. They try the header, and they score off Gary Pittman. 